Today's text comes from Mark chapter 13. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, You see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. My family used to make the drive to my aunt's farm in Minnesota every Thanksgiving and for a week every summer. As someone who grew up under the lights of suburban Detroit, one of the biggest treats during these trips was to go out and look at the stars. The Milky Way would cut across the sky and in a moment, I'd get a kind of vertigo as I stood in awe of how small our planet is and how tiny I am on this planet. I get that same feeling when I consider how small an amount of time humans have been on this planet. The Earth is 4.6 billion years old and the foundations that were laid over billions of years only allowed complex multicellular life to begin about one and a half billion years ago. Primates only arose about 85 million years ago and humans have only existed for about 300,000 years with the earliest known civilizations beginning about 6,000 years ago. Our own individual lives, lasting at most 100 years or so, are tiny grains of sand in comparison with the vast history of Earth itself. In fact, our existence so far has been so fleeting that if human civilization ceased to exist, a future civilization might struggle to recognize us in a fossil record. Remember that many of the dinosaur species we know of today survive for millions of years not just a couple hundred thousand. We tend to think of our buildings and structures and systems and ways of doing things as permanent, but they're not. It's only been for the last 200 years that we have belched greenhouse gases into the atmosphere in the pursuit of more and more things to buy and faster ways for those things to get to where people can buy them. It's only been for the last hundred years that we've traveled, at least in this country, primarily in gas-powered vehicles, and only within the last 20 years or so that U.S. car makers have convinced us that bigger cars are better, even though they use more resources, are harder to stop in an emergency, and tend to roll more often. Smartphones, as we know them, you know that thing you're probably watching the sermon on? Those have only existed for 13 years. The news out of the climate summit this past week has been more of what we expect from climate summits. There is the usual hand wringing by well-meaning people who try to get people on board with necessary measures, but are pretty much resigned to the idea that we cannot tear down the temple of progress at any cost, or at least that we cannot even consider changing the definition of progress. There's also the usual pushback from those we imagine still hold all the power, the coal and oil companies, those whose fortunes are tied up in the idea that nothing will ever change. There is also someone we look to as a savior right now. It's Greta Thunberg. But by putting her on that pedestal, we shirk our own part in the change that needs to happen in order to salvage a decent way of life for the generations that will follow ours. And we fail to hold our own politicians and decision makers accountable when we put that mantle on her shoulders. This problem is much bigger than a tenacious young person who doesn't care what other people think and is willing to call the most powerful to account. This is something that it requires our own investment because change 
only happens when many people fight and work together for it. We have been on this planet for such a minuscule amount of time, and yet our negative impact has been outsized. We have built our temples to wealth at any cost, but they will come tumbling down, and they will not be rebuilt as they stand now. Today's texts are apocalyptic in nature, and anyone familiar with the Lutheran flavor of Christianity knows we are not so into apocalypses. But not to scare you, apocalypse just means a revealing, a pulling back of the veil. An apocalypse simply shows us what God already knows, that another world is possible. For many years, we were led astray by those who said climate change wasn't real or questioned the impact of humans on the earth. Now we're being led astray by those who say climate change is just too big a problem to solve. But you might remember that last year when the whole world stopped for COVID, smog lifted in cities that hadn't been able to see the mountains surrounding them for decades. Animals returned to places where humans normally frequent. Rivers cleared of sludge. It took only a few months for the earth to start healing. We had been previously told that change was impossible or too expensive. But after that glimpse of what is possible, can we really afford not to change? Today's gospel reminds us that even when we consider, even what we consider our biggest accomplishments, will crumble in the face of history. Today's gospel reminds us that God does not dwell in temples we construct. We are reminded that we are simultaneously tiny in comparison with all who have gone before us and all who will come after. And yet, our lives are infinitesimally special to the one who created us. And in fact, we're so special and so beloved that we can't afford not to live into life-giving, necessary, holy change. What big stones, the disciples marvel, but Jesus is not impressed by those accomplishments. St. Therese of Lisieux said, Great acts will not be afforded to me, so I must accept little things with great love. Jesus is always and forever calling us into a life marked not by big, impressive accomplishments, but a life lived in great love for our home and for one another. Amen.